Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be giving you guys a little bit of an update into the hurricane season. We're not going to be going over the forecast as much as we're going to be going over the current conditions of the sea surface temperatures, the dry air, and also the shear. <laughs> Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think we will have our next tropical cyclone develop? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our overall sea surface temperatures across the entire globe. Uh, and I just want to draw your attention to a few different areas. First off, our ENSO region, which is that area offshore of Central America. It's kind of blue and red and yellow right now, so there's not a lot to say. It's a very, very neutral phase. We will look at a graph that's going to tell you a lot more than this, probably, um, just so that, you know, based on the naked eye here, it's hard to say whether it's a La Nina or an El Nino or a neutral ENSO because it's pretty much uh, very, very neutral right now. Our MDR, our main development region, which is basically offshore of Africa there all the way to the Eastern Caribbean, so you just take that all the way across. That is actually in the blue right now. We're a little bit colder than normal in that area, but it has been warming up a little bit. Uh, so we're expecting that to go into the positive direction, or at least here at Direct Weather, we are definitely expecting that to occur. The further north you go in the Atlantic, the more warmer than normal we get. You can see the Caribbean and a lot of the Gulf is actually warming up. We see a lot of warmer than normal conditions sitting around south of Cuba and also uh, west of Cuba there uh, into the Gulf of Mexico, especially the southern Gulf of Mexico there. Offshore of the east coast near Bermuda, we also have some very warm temperatures as well set up, which will help a lot of those off out to sea. Uh, tropical cyclones develop further. All right, let's take a zoomed in look here at the Atlantic. This is just going to give you a little bit of a better view here. And as you can see that warm blob, we see the very warm temperatures there in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, like I said, and you can see those blue temperatures near the, I guess the very bottom uh, side of this screen near Africa. You can see that is our main development region, which is like I said, currently colder than normal. Here's the seven day change. So this is going to show us a lot about what's changed in the past seven days and as you can see not a lot has changed we've seen a lot of warming there in the Atlantic and then even near the Caribbean and the Gulf we've seen a bit of warming uh the Enso region which is the the El Nino La Nina region really has been neutral in its changes we've not really gone in either direction specifically it's been kind of both at the same time here's a zoomed in look at the Atlantic and as you can see Offshore of the East Coast, we've actually seen some cooling going on. That's due to those colder temperatures we were dealing with towards the beginning. I do expect we will see some warming very, very soon due to the warmer temperatures we have in the region. The MDR has cooled a little bit, so we're going to need to see what happens once we get some warmer temperatures in these regions. Uh, that'll definitely change things quite a bit. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. I'm going to move on towards those charts. We're going to look at the Nino Index. We're going to look at the North Atlantic. We're going to take a look at the MDR, the Caribbean, the Gulf, all of it. And then we're going to get into that dust and then that shear as well. All right, now, first things first, this is our Nino 3.4 Index. And this is what we basically gauge our El Nino or La Nina based off of. And as you can see, we've been in a La Nina, but we are heading more into the neutral and more towards an El Nino at this point, unless we see some cooling, uh, that is where it's kind of heading. You see the top there is at a plus 0 0.5. That would basically be the line that's required for an El Nino status. And then you can see on the very left, uh, bottom left there, that's a negative, negative 0 0.5. That would be basically the minimum for a La Nina. So we're definitely in a neutral ENSO here. It's been well within the neutral ENSO line and we're basically at a 0 0.079 which is about as neutral as it can get it can go in either direction at this point definitely not a la nino or an el nino uh, yet it's 50 50 right now i do think we will head more towards the la nina or stay in a neutral I, i've still stuck with that being the overwhelming favorite at this point here's the north atlantic overall temperatures and as you can see we've cooled significantly at may 23rd we were well above normal sea surface temperatures overall but we've seen a massive cooling trend uh, over the past two weeks or so uh, now we're sitting at negative uh, 0.2 at this point uh, it does look like this could be curving back up we could see some warming in the atlantic coming up soon especially in those areas near bermuda like i said it has been warming up quite a bit so i do expect this could rebound a little bit before we get started with the main portion of our hurricane season which will be late late July early August is when we will get started with that so we have about a month or so uh, if not more now 
For the Atlantic MDR, this has been all over the place. We've seen it cool twice. You can see there once near the beginning of April and then once there towards the end of May. Uh, both times it kind of rebounded. And now at June 6th, we've pretty much gone back towards neutral. Uh, and this can go either way. I think this one will also rebound towards the heat and, the, and really the main portion of the hurricane season. This is what we've seen year after year, actually. Uh, it's just kind of been cooler this time of year, and then it really ramps up towards the beginning of the hurricane season. The Caribbean was colder than normal. It was actually below that 0.0, .0 line, but it's gone back up above it, actually, as you can see, and we're sticking around that. The Gulf of Mexico, which is basically right next to the Caribbean, obviously, always kind of correlates with it a little bit. Uh, we've seen this one also rebound. It did go below that 0, 0.0 line as well. But it has also rebounded to where it's now at a 0 0.235, which is a good click above normal. It's nothing significant, but it is above normal for sure, to say the least. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that dust. We're going to see what that looks like as of right now. Could change a lot, but we're still going to take a look. And then we're going to take a look at the shear, which also could change quite a bit as well. Now, this is kind of the dust forecast for today, and you can see in, in the MDR there is a lot of it going on, but not towards the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico, uh, so something else is hindering from tropical activity right now. Uh, but by the time we reach the end of this model run, by the time we're taking a look at the 16th of June, you can see it does predict some dust making its way into the Caribbean, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and the southeast coast, so this will become a factor moving forward, uh, and this is typical this time of year. Uh, it's going to go back and forth. It'll enter in, and then it'll kind of exit out and enter in and exit out. It'll go back and forth quite a bit. The shear is really what's hindering us from having tropical activity. We've had a large amount of shear in the Gulf, the Caribbean, and the MDR there, as you can see. Those reds and browns and pinks is definitely where there's high amounts of shear. This is also quite typical this time of year uh, when you're heading from the spring. In the winter and spring months, there's the most shear. And then as you head towards the summer, it lessens and lessens and lessens until you reach early fall. And then it will begin to increase as we approach winter as well. This is why we have a, a large, well, this combined with the very warm temperatures from the summer heat in the Atlantic, that combined with the, the shear decreasing is what really just causes that hurricane season to really happen. All right, now let's take a look at my sea surface temperatures forecast. This is my most recent one. I'm just going to throw in some of those updated forecasts for you guys. If you haven't caught our most recent hurricane forecast videos, we're expecting slightly above average sea surface temperatures for the MDR, also for the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and the southeast coast there. And we do expect some even further above normal temperatures to be possible for the Gulf. So yes, we do expect a lot of warming to occur in many of these regions. We expect below normal temperatures to set up north of Bermuda. That is that um, area that we've been kind of watching that could be cooling soon. I might be updating this soon uh, because it seems a little bit outdated based on what we currently have. Also south of the Caribbean there, you can see there is a little bit of an area there north of Central America that does have some below normal temperatures expected as well there for the sea surface temperatures. Now this was our overall forecast, a little bit of a sneak peek here. Highest risk, best chance there in the Gulf. That's where we expect the most tropical activity like normal. Above, above average activity there for the Caribbean based on the sea surface temperatures and all. Wild card for the East Coast, this really just depends on if a high pressure system will be able to bring these up the coast or not. We have not as favorable south of the Caribbean and then above average development there in the MDR due to above and normal sea surface temperatures and likely below normal shear. Our amount of storms forecast, we expect above average named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes, 14 to 20 named storms, 7 to 11 hurricanes, and 3 to, eight, or sorry, 3 to 6 major hurricanes, which is above average uh, as far as the average amount goes. Anyway, for our confidence tab, this is a little bit of a longer range forecast. We're sticking with a 4 out of 6, like always, with these long range forecasts. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we're done with the significant severe weather threats or do you think we're just getting started? Do you think we'll have a lot more moving forward? And Jayco Vlog said, I think there will be some severe weather that's significant, although nothing like we saw in March. And I agree there, we saw some very significant severe weather there uh, in the month of March. Tornado outbreaks left and right. We saw back-to-back -back tornado threats, actually, high-risk threats. Uh, and it seems like we're mostly done with that kind of a severe weather threat that's that major. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Doby Nagel, Lear the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Flago, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Cronenthal.
If you would like to join this exciting Patreon end screen of the day, you can do so by joining that very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. If you'd like to join this, you can do so by clicking that button next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button, leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.